Hi, I'm George. Welcome to G-Makes. And in this tutorial, we are going to be making some procedural mushrooms. Why mushrooms? I don't know. It's starting to be October when I'm recording this, so I guess they're like kind of... Mushrooms are kind of spooky. Uh, mostly because I just like being able to draw things and have like in, in Blender using the curve tool and then have things appear. Uh, and I just found a way to do it with mushrooms. So that's why it's mushrooms. Anyway, uh, so here's how we're going to get doing this. All right, so here I am in Blender. Uh, and we're going to delete Blender 3.3. Uh, we're going to delete this cube. Uh, don't need it. Uh, we're going to actually start, as I love to do with these, uh, uh, a curve. Um, this is like my lightning tutorial and other ones. I like being able to draw with the, uh, we're going to edit mode. Uh, with the pen tool, like being able to draw the curve. Um, it's just nice to have that control. Um, so, as opposed to have it all being in the, the GeoNodes editor. So, I'm actually going to delete this, uh, the original curve, and then I'm just going to draw, let's draw one like that. Um, perfect, and this is going to be our uh, base uh, curve that we'll use to make this mushroom. Um, and so now, we will Pull up a new window, blah, 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 and GeoNodes. Sweet. Uh, so now we're in the Geometry Nodes editor. Uh, and we have our geometry, which is a curve, and we have our output. Um, so uh, we're going to start by making the stem. A mushroom really has two parts. It has the stem bit here. We have the, we have the, the stem bit, and then you have the cap bit, um, which might have spots on it or whatever. Um, so we're going to start with the, the stem bit. And then we'll add the cap bit on top of it. And this is going to be, uh, I'm kind of modeling that like Super Mario-esque mushroom. Just I think that's kind of like the stereotypical mushroom. Um, pictures, pictures, pictures of it. Um, so that's the one, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the one, no, the, yeah, not the one-up mushroom, the uh, power-up mushroom. Um, but I don't know what the scientific name is either. Anyway, uh, that's the one we're going to be uh, modeling. Uh, in this, uh, with this generator, of course, though, since everything's procedural, you can use this kind of base way of doing it, uh, and then use it to make kind of anything. Like, you could even make probably a stylized tree doing this method. Um, because what's a mushroom but not a small, tiny tree? Um, or sometimes a fairly large mini tree. Anyway, so here's our curve, and so first thing is we need to make a mesh. So we have a curve to mesh, curve to mesh. Uh, and then we're just going to use a circle, curved circle, as our profile curve. So now we can even, we can fill caps too. So now we have a tube. Wonderful. Uh, I mean, that's basically what a stem is, but we want to add a little more detail, a little more control for how we want this thing to look. So we're going to grab a uh, set curve radius. And so now we can set the radius, how thick it is. Um, and then because we want this to be somewhat tapered, uh, we are going to grab a spline parameter and then put the length in, but it looks real weird uh, for a couple reasons. One, um, when I drew, uh, well, a new annotation, uh, when I drew this mushroom uh, with the curve pen, I drew it upwards like that um, because I want to be able to like draw from the ground, draw where the stem is, and then figure out where the cap goes instead of drawing downwards going from the cap and then figuring out where the stem will land. That's just the way I like thinking about this and the way that works for me. So uh, because of that, uh, because of that I drew upwards, um, that means that this point right here is really our like base point and then this is the end of it. And we don't want that, we want it the other way. We want uh, the program to think that this is our end and this is our base just to get that taper correct. So to do that, real simple, we just do a reverse curve um, so there we go. We got it reversed. Uh, if you don't draw your want your mushrooms to be that way, if you want to draw from the cap down, you don't need this step. Just make sure when you make your initial curve, you draw it that way. Um, but now it also is super wide and weird. It's like some sort of hat, I guess. Uh, but we'll just fix that with a math node right there. Switch it to divide. And then if we make this number big, you can see we're getting a bit of a taper. Um, perfect. You can now, because this this right here is is now using a math function. You can kind of mess with it if you want. Um, so you could divide and you could also do something like a minimum, um, which will allow you kind of 
fix uh, where this taper kind of starts and becomes a tube. But to really use a lot of these math, we're going to actually resample uh, this curve. And I'm actually just going to make it a length for now, keep it at 0.1. But you can see with this minimum, you can kind of control and also using this length, you can kind of control where that taper starts and everything like that. Uh, maximum, you get a weird, weird, funky effect. That's like that. Kind of like a devil's tower kind of thing. You do greater than also works pretty well. And then you would just need another uh, division node in there. Um, less than as well. Also kind of the opposite of that. Uh, you can also do a compare. You want to compare a starting endpoint. Um, I'm just going to be kind of stylized for now. And I'm going to keep it the divide. I might switch this later. Uh, but we'll make it fairly stylized. Something's going to kind of thin out near the top. So with that, um, we are going to add a little more detail to this because the mushrooms, they're fairly just like smooth and round, but not entirely. And also, again, this is semi stylized at this moment. So we're going to also grab a random value node. And we're going to right now, let's take this. Let's just make that nine. Uh, so we're going to plug this in. And we're going to put our max, which was just at nine and our minimum. We're also going to lower this again. And our minimum. You can be below or above that. The minimum actually above it's kind of nice because it's not as extreme. So we'll do that. Well, let's, let's just bump that to 15. So there we go. So now we have a little more variety in that stem. Of course, you can always like change this to 0.05. You don't know. Let's actually keep it there. Uh, there we go. So that's our stem right now. Lovely. Uh, but it's just a stem and not even kind of that. So uh, first thing, I'm just going to grab all this. Uh, Control J to join it together. And then we are going to make sure we select this frame and to open up this little sidebar node. And we're just going to name this stem. Be a little organizational, a little organization. I'll uh, close that back up. Um, so now we need to add the cap on top of the mushroom, the thing that actually makes it look like a mushroom. So to do that, uh, it's real simple. We are going to actually just instance on points. We're just going to instance along this curve on the very end of it. We want to make sure this is after the reverse curve, or I guess if you don't have the reverse curve, you don't. You, you can just do it from the, the original. Um, so, but of course we have nothing. So if we just put a cube here, and let's just, for now, we're just going to instance a cube. So this curve goes into the points, and then we need a join geometry to see what this looks like at the very end. Move that down, connect these up, and there we go. So why is it like this? Well, it's because we have more than one point. We have a couple points from this base curve. Remember, if we go here, we have one, two, three. So it's instancing on those three points. We don't want that. We just want one. How do we do that? Real simple. We just take a resample curve. And I'll take a new one. A uh, resample curve. Put it right there and then on count down to one uh, and this again this will sorry uh this again this will put it at that like end point or what it thinks it's like the origin uh the first point so if i don't have this reverse curve it switches it to the bottom so the whole thing flips um so uh that's pretty darn neat but, but there we go uh pretty darn neat uh but now this is just a cube on a weird thing and that's even in minecraft uh, mushrooms aren't just cubes. So we want to make an actual cat for this. So I'm going to delete that cube. And now we're going to start not with a cone, as you might think, um, because a, a cone, I mean, it's pretty much the, if we were modeling this, we might do a cone like hard surface modeling or sculpting. You might do a, a cone or a uh, whatever it's called, a, a cylinder, because um, if I add a new annotation, uh, because those are roughly the shape we want. We want this dome shape and that's a cone. You know, it's pretty much a dome and a cylinder is is not a dome, but you can control these points and you can shrink it in so you can make it like a dome anyway. Uh, but we don't have that modeling capability. We can't bevel the edges, at least not easily uh, as easily as I'd like to. So instead, we're going to start with right down here, a curve circle. Wonderful. And then we are going to again curve to mesh. Curve to mesh. So if we instance this curve circle, there we go. We got a circle curve to mesh. And now the profile curve is going to get interesting. So we can actually use a Bezier, Bezier segment right here. And now we can control this. So you can see you can you can really control this. Um, let's 
I've experimented. Let's see if these numbers still work. Perfect. Yes, so there we go. That's that's it. Um, but it's flipped, so we're just going to grab uh, this, whatever, what's it called? A transform node. Transform node uh, right there, and we're just going to, uh, along this X or Y rotation, doesn't really matter. Just 180 it. Um, so now we have a nice mushroom cap. Look at that. <laughs> it's very large, uh, but we got one. Um, perfect. And also now we want to add a little thickness to this. I mean, we could, you could like solidify it, but that does the whole thing. And then it goes blah, blah, blah. So we're actually just going to add an extrude mesh, um, get off individual. And then we actually go in the negative. So it's actually going to be a little bit outwards. Perfect. We'll say that yeah, point negative 0.02. Now it's a very large mushroom cap, but it's there. Um, so we just want to kind of mess with the scale a bit. I'm just going to do it over here. Perfect, and we can also actually move this down. There we go, and now we got a mushroom, and then maybe with the scale of everything, maybe I go back here and I'm like, all right, so we can actually widen this bit up and you can lower that bit. So maybe I want something more like that. Make that five and nine. Make it like that, and then maybe, what's 0.01 look like? That's too many, so maybe 0.02. That's 0.1 again. Again, this is all the finicky stuff you can do. Uh, 0.08. We'll do that. 0.08. We'll say that. Um, so there we go. So now we got our mushroom, more or less. Uh, you can see the shapes really coming along. Uh, it's nice. Look, at we got a little divot at the top. It's nice and round. You can control this fully. Uh, you can like control how steep it is. All that jazz. All that fun stuff. But, you know, mushrooms have like this inner bit. Like this might work if you're rendering from like here. But as soon as you try to render from underneath, you're going to lose the effect that it's a mushroom. And, you know, we want things under this mushroom because, you know, it's, it's I don't know, if, like fairies live under, little elves live under there. I don't know. Uh, ants. Um, so uh, to do that, we need to add something there. And what are we going to add? Well, we are going to add, in this instance, actually a cone. Uh, so we don't use it for the actual dome, but we do use it uh, for this bit. So uh, if we just go ahead and we, I'll close that down. Uh, if we just take this and we join them together, join geometry, uh, it's going to look real funky. It's going to be way up there. So let me actually grab a, another transform and bring this down. There we go. So you can see it's just a cone. It's just a cone in the middle of our mushroom cap. Uh, so we want to get this radius in the bottom going a little bit better. Now we can maybe raise it up again, get it situated where we want. I like that. Uh, but now it's just a flat disc. We don't have that nice, that coniture, that curve, that the concavedness uh, that we want. So uh, that's, but the nice thing why we're using a mesh too here, which is really nice, is that we have these uh, these uh, selections of top, bottom, side. So we can actually, be before or after the transform, it doesn't really matter, but we can just do delete geometry, put that here, switch it to face, and then we just want to delete the bottom. So that's our selection. And look at there we go. So now if we make the depth a little lower, we can come that through and there we go. So now we have our depth and we have that little underneath uh, for our mushroom. And now we have the base shape of it. Look at that. So uh, let's going to group this all together. So through uh, we'll, we'll include the instance on points on this. So we'll control J that together and bring up the side menu and name this cap captain. Uh, so that is our mushroom cap. Uh, that is everything in there. Just want to grab this, move it over, move all this over, join geometry. Wonderful. So this is our mushroom cap, uh, everything we need to make it. And actually we have it on there. Uh, so now, now we want to go ahead and actually, uh, start texturing this. And then we'll add a little more detail in after that, as we draw a couple more. So we're going to add a couple uh, set material nodes, um, even though I don't really have any materials right now. We're going to add one, and we're actually going to add two on uh, from the cap to this output. Um, and you'll see why in just a second. So if I go over and I open a shader workspace, um, or at least window over here, I'm actually going to go to the base one and just name this uh, stem. And then I'll just copy it for now and name this cap. Those are the only two textures we're going to have at the moment, and maybe just for this whole project. So we're going to change this one to stem. Let me switch to the, so you can see what I'm doing. And then 
this one actually we're going to have two. So it's going to start as the stem, but then it's going to end up as the cap. Um, this order is important, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Um, but first, we'll start with the stem texture. And so we're going to give it something kind of like off-white. Yeah, we'll say like that, I guess. Uh, so off-white, uh, and then we'll... Roughness is going to be slightly shiny, and then also I'm going to add a noise. Noise texture. Right down to the normal, and then actually a bump as well. Alright, we'll plug that into the height. Um, so there we go, uh, we can mess with the scale of this. Uh, I'm actually also going to grab a subdivide, uh, subdivision surface, put that in there, as well as a shade, set shade smooth. Um, we'll actually put that after this join geometry. So there we go, we can shade this smooth. Um, so that's our stem. Uh, it's not quite perfect, I'm actually going to change this to object. And then you can change and mess around with uh, the strength and everything. I'll quickly also add a color ramp here. Again, just kind of quickly going through this so we can really finesse how much it's kind of sticking out of the stem. So there we go, that's good enough for now. Perfect, that's our mushroom stem. Uh, and now we want to uh, make the cap. So we're going to cap, and this is going to be, I'm just going to do again that kind of dark red dark red color, uh, and then also we want this to be fairly shiny, mushrooms are fairly shiny, uh, and then we're also going to grab another noise, same thing, noise texture, grab a bump, bump to height, uh, and then we want this not to be super strong, and we want the scale on this one to be pretty big, I'm not going to mess with the, the coordinates of this one, um, so again, we just want a little texture so it's not completely smooth. You can also add like a musgrave or something if you want, but I think this works out pretty well. There we go, so we got a little textured mushroom um, and a little stem going. Um, but uh, it, it's looking a little plain and also this bottom part it should be pretty much the same color as a stem. That's what we'll do for now. So how do we do that? Well, like I said, um, we have these two for the uh, cap section of this mushroom. We have these two set materials. Uh, it's ending up cap because uh, it goes, okay, set material stem. Oh, now it's set material cap. So we only want this to affect that uh, this top bit. We don't actually want uh, the top, uh, this bottom bit, the cone section, to be affected by the red. So we luckily have this extrude mesh, which gives us, gives us these two selections of top and side. So if we grab top and put that to our cone, you can see we grab top. And then we move that all the way over here to the uh, set material for the cap and just plug that in. And there we go. So now we can again mess with that scale. Oh, that's of the cap. I don't want I'll keep it there. But if we go to stem and I mess with the scale of this, you can see it's going to affect everything. Perfect. And there we go. So that's our uh, mushroom. The, the color is pretty much done. I'm going to maybe darken this, this guy a little bit. Yeah, we'll say like that. There we go. So that's our mushroom. Um, more or less done. Maybe a little less strength on that. Um, you can add a little more detail. You can mess around with the shaders a bit. Um, but that's the basis for it. Um, and we're going to keep... Oh, I like kind of this this tapered look. But again, you can mess around with those math nodes and you can change this around. Um, so like you can, like I said, you can go to a, like a minimum. Uh, and then you can mess around with some of these settings uh, before it gets too funky. You can see it starts to get really weird, uh, but fun. So anyway, uh, this was five. All right, this was nine. This was five. I can always mess. I can like messing around with procedural stuff. I could do all day, so I have to kind of restrain myself. Uh, and even then, it, it's it's tempting to just keep going. Anyway, uh, so now we want to do the last little coup de gras, little little detail finesse bits on there. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on the stem a little bit more. Um, and because I actually really like uh, some mushrooms have it, others don't, um, and sometimes it's only in specific places. Uh, but sometimes they're a little like fuzzies, the little fuzzies that stick out from all over uh, the mushroom. Like you'll go on and there'll be like little fuzzies all over, and it just adds a nice texture and like ooh something's going on there. So I want to add those. So we're going to uh, on our stem just grab a uh, another instance on points. Instance on points node, plug that in, 
it's going to disappear because we need to uh, take this join geometry. Uh, but I'm actually going to do it before because I don't need everything. So we'll just grab another join. Place it right there, right before our subdivision surface. Mesh. There we go. Perfect. So uh, now what do we want to instance on this? Well, to save on, you could do like a cylinder or really like render out a hair or cones or something. But to save on a little bit of processing power, we're just going to grab a grid. Plug that in. And uh, there's a lot going on. So we're actually going to make this very thin. Um, like maybe even extremely thin. And we also can make this fairly small. Um, but you can see it's all, they're all just kind of lying up next to each other. Cause we actually do want to grab a distribute, uh, points on faces, plug that in beforehand to give a little random distribution. And we also grab a, a random value again, plug that into our scale. And then we'll find our maximum. It's going to be pretty small. And we don't want zero because we always want these to kind of be here. So the minimum will make pretty small as well. Um, and now luckily because we have uh, this wonderful uh, distribute points on faces, uh, we have our normal and rotation. So we can see what happens when we plug in rotation. So let's get a little bit better. Um, but you can also, if you want a little more control, you can grab a align Euler to vector and then choose like Z, um, I think works pretty well. And then you can choose the factor on that. You can also do it along the normal um, and that can work for you as well. So that's just another little bit. You can see Z, you can also try Y. Y looks pretty good right now and X, not X. So let's do Y. Um, and I also wanna bump up the density of these and we're actually gonna make these much smaller and we want a lot of them. So let's do 100. Maybe even more. Yeah, we want more. Let's do 200. Yeah, little fuzzies. Um, all right, so now we got little fuzzies all along the thing. Uh, and of course, like maybe I want to make this. You have all this control over it. So now we got little fuzzies. Sweet, sweet, sweet little fuzzies. All right, so uh, next thing on the agenda for finishing up this mushroom. We're almost there, but we need these little spots on top. It ain't got no spots. So let's add them. Um, so I'm gonna quickly organize. I was trying to be organized. So I'm gonna stay that a little bit. Um, we're going to instance on points, all this jazz, align Euler vector, this random value and this grid. Uh, this is all going to Control J and these will be, I'll, I'll call these like fuzzies, fuzzies. Uh, so those are little fuzzies. Perfect. Um, so now uh, we need to do spots, 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 spots. I'm going to move these material nodes over here. So it's everyone's favorite distribute, distribute points on faces. Again, going from this instance on points, going from our, our ooh, not over there, going from uh, this cap, uh, whole little bit schnazzle over there. Uh, we're going to do distribute points. Uh, again, it will make the cap vanish um, because uh, it replaces that geometry. So we need to join it back up. There we go. Uh, and now we want to instance on points. There we go. Right down there. Perfect. Um, so again, we have no instance. And this one, I actually am going to just use a cube you could also do a grid and then extrude mesh again. Um, I'll be doing that anyway. I'll just start with a cube though, because it gives the base shape kind of right off. Look at that. Wonderful. Um, so we're going to really lower that Z's, Z size down. Um, and then these ones as well. We can, we can really lower them down. Boop. Perfect. Uh, and Z can go, I don't know, 0.01. Yeah, we want those really little. Um, sweet. So now we have the base idea of this again, and we can look at, uh, again, rotating Euler. Uh, we're going to see just the base rotation, how that looks. Um, that looks pretty good to me, so I'll just stick with that for now. Um, and then we're going to, again, mess with the scale. So I'm going to grab a random value, put that in the scale. Um, you could mess with, like, combine XYZ to get them to scale in different ways. 
but um, I am just going to keep them all kind of the same. I'll maybe make these a little bit like rectangular, uh, like 0.12, just slightly to, to mesh it up a bit. And then we'll, yeah, we'll go like, well, just a little big ones. All right. Um, and also I'm going to change this from random to Poisson and just give a little bit of space between these. So there's not any of that quite overlap. You can get that because there are some times when like they merge together. Um, but where it's going to go that, maybe I'll bump up this maximum value just a tiny bit. And then also I'm going to bump this down to like, it's not usually a ton on these mushrooms. So well, five. Perfect. Uh, but they look like squares, which again, if you're doing something like Minecraft, kind of works. Um, but we don't want that. So on this cube, you're going to grab a subdivide mesh. And then we're just going to bump it to like two. And then we're going to grab a triangulate. Triangulate. There we go. And then we are going to also grab uh, a dual mesh, which is actually one of my favorite nodes. I just love it. It's fun. Time to did 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 dual mesh. All right, so you can start to see it's it's messing up some stuff. You can keep boundaries, you know. If we go even more, if we go less. So you can see we're starting to get some interesting geometry. You can mess with these, like fix, fix, alternate, anything you want. Um, but we want to give this a little bumpiness. So. I'm going to move this all the way down here. So to do that, we are going to grab just an extrude mesh. I guess you could also do a set position and go through that whole rigmarole. But I'm just going to extrude mesh. We're not going to do individual. And then we're going to make this offset scale real small. Uh, before, actually, we are going to use noise though. So we're going to grab a noise texture factor offset. Uh, and then scale that way down maybe uh, another one of those eh, not like that uh, but now we need to just grab a math node and again we'll do a divide so that way as it gets bigger we can really control this sweet uh and then you can also of course uh go ahead and you can change the the, the uh, what am i saying you can go ahead and change the rotation of these um if you want i'm going to keep them all kind of the same way right now but you can really mess around with these you can subdivide more actually subdivide a little bit more that's what at four subdivisions um again you can mess with like how many vertices how many things you could switch this to a, a a cube a cylinder any you have all this control over you can do make these little spots um but i like that so we're gonna go ahead and take all of that again Control J it, and now we're gonna name it spots. There we go. That's our spots. Um, and also, in case you like wanted to make a different texture for these spots, uh, so right now it's going up, and then it's going through the set material, the stem again. Um, so what you could do to avoid that is you could just move uh, this join geometry. You can move it after the set materials, and then add your own in this section. Um, you could go ahead. You do again have the extrude mesh for all of these little dots. So you could add another one in there and do the top thing again. So we have our mushroom pretty much done. Um, I think I'm, this is, this is pretty much done for me. Yeah, there was a couple tweaks we didn't go into, but if you just want to make a mushroom, you've made a mushroom. So uh, let's test it though, because this is supposed to be procedural and be able to draw with the curve. So that's our base one. And now if I do that, look at it, we got one. Again, these are kind of stylized with uh, the, the the more cone-shaped stem. Um, but you can see we can draw them. Yada yada. We can draw some mushrooms. Woo! Um, <laughs> that one's funny. Okay, there we go. So we got some mushrooms. Uh, but you can see the, the, the cap. It's all kind of the same. Um, and we want a little bit of that tilt. So not everything is like perfectly straight up and down, especially when we're drawing them all funky like this. So uh, to get that tilt, uh, we actually have to go to uh, our instance on points for the cap right here. And we do have a rotation. So you see if I rotate, rotate it, um, it does them all like that. Um, and if I do this, yada, yada, yada. Um, so we're going to grab a random value again, favorite thing, uh, and then actually a combine even though we're separating these, we want to combine because that gives us the three separate inputs. Two rotation. 
Um, and then value we will plug into, uh, you can see what each one of these does. So that Z doesn't super matter, though it, we're going to add it. Here is our uh, little guys going that way and little guys going this way. So those two, X and Y, are the most important um, for us. So I'm just going to bring this down here. Um, so we're going to start with uh, X because it's at the top. So if we add X, you can see everything's everyone's slightly different. These aren't all the same on the X axis. But we need to figure out kind of what we want those limits to be. We always want a little bit. little bit there we go we'll say yeah we'll say like point let's do like 0 0.7 negative 0.7 to 0 0.7 so it has a range of one but it can be anywhere in those sweet so that's one done and now we'll just copy that and we'll put it into y but we'll mix it up a little bit maybe you want a little less on the y-axis But maybe I want a little bit, so we'll like negative there. Perfect. So we're saying that's going to be our uh, turning for those ones. Uh, and then we're going to grab. Uh, and then also like you can always, again, these all have seed values. So you can kind of mix through the seeds. Uh, and then we'll grab one last for the Z. And again, this one you can kind of do whatever you want. Because it's just rotating your, all along that Z axis. So there we go. So now we have your mushrooms. And again... You can take these, and then as you kind of move it around, things will start to update. You can rotate. I can even just delete that vertice, and it will shrink it down. So, you know, all good stuff. And again, pen tool. And now these will all have different, uh, different rotations of the uh, cap. Um, but I also want to do something similar uh, with the scale. But the scale I'm going to keep basically the the same I'm not gonna mess with like X Y and Z on the scale so if we just grab a random value plug that into our scale we want to figure out what we want so we want one and then we have this set to set this to zero as the minimum that's doing some funky stuff so we're going to move that down but we want the minimum to be zero we want these again to be fairly close but we want some uh, ability, some difference between all these, but not a ton. So let's say 0.5 and point, point 0.5, point 0.3, let's say that. So there we go. Um, we have a bunch of mushrooms that we can control. Um, and maybe this one's a little too much. There we go. Alright, so we got a bunch of mushrooms to control. Control the seed values of everything. And these are just little detail bits. So again, this is all procedural. You can mess around with this. Um, so, there we go. Uh, that is, I'm going to wrap it up there, you guys. So that is uh, how to kind of draw these mushrooms uh, any way you want. Um, you can just draw a whole bunch of them. Let me use this. You can draw a whole bunch of them. Of course, uh, if you draw too many, uh, it might start affecting your computer. Um, and then, of course, at the very end, if you wanted to, you could like add another scale node all the way down here, like a transform node. Let's actually see if that works. So I'm, I didn't actually try that out. So if we do a, a transform after this fully joined geometry, because now we have the scale of these guys. Look at that. Um, so if we put this back to one, but if we do a random value, You can see it's not super enjoying that because uh, that's not quite how this works. But maybe if we do a, oh, I don't want to bring my computer, but let's try it. I'm going to, I haven't saved. So let's save. Mushroom tutorial. Did I switch it? Tutorial. Yeah. Mushroom tutorial. I just want to see if we uh, realize instances. Before we do this, since these are all instances, not remove name attribute. 
realize instances. It's gonna slow, so there we go. Uh, what happens if I do that now? I don't think it will work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, so too bad there. Um, but you can modify things all along the whole line. Um, so I'm gonna delete, delete that. Anyway, so that's mushrooms for you. Um, let's see how they actually look rendered out. Um, I'm going to uh, we'll add a world world color. Uh, we'll make this lighter. I don't want to mess with the of HDR. We'll go film transparent. Uh, sure, I'll put in a HDR. What am I talking about? Do this, blah, 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 environment texture, open. Let's see. Uh, my textures, I want HDRI, HDRI, uh, and my favorite ones. There we go. Um, so this is an e this is an Eevee. This is how they look in Eevee. You can see, pretty darn nice. And I'll save, and then if we go to, uh, we have even here ME inclusion and bloom in there. Screen space reflections too will give a little bit. And then if we switch to cycles, GPU compute, you can see we got some real nice mushrooms going on. And here I'll even go out of film transparent just so we get a nice little background going. But yeah, so that's how to make mushrooms. You can see we got the underbelly. So that's how to make mushrooms. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, mushrooms are just fun, guys. And let's actually just let's do it at minimum. And we're gonna switch out of this here. I just want to make these look. I don't know if I like that taper. There we go. So now I, I like the thicker mushroom again. So you don't really need a minimum here. You could just do get lose a spline length, but you know, I like it. It keeps it kind of. Uh, consistent and then you can even like do that let's do that okay so that's my mushrooms woo fun time with mushrooms uh, use responsibly and uh, go forth populate your forests your pizzas anything you want with some wonderful wonderful procedural mushrooms well I've been George I hope you've learned something this tutorial I hope you make something cool with it and I'll catch you next time Peace. Like and subscribe and thanks for watching. I forgot to say that. I'm trying to get better about that. I guess click the bell or something. YouTube does stuff. Thank you. See you next time.